We'll start now on the next notebook, string operations. When we are dealing with strings or text in Python, sometimes you need to extract certain text, you need to uh, do some string manipulation. Let's see how we can do this in Python. I will explain the different concepts around that. You can take a look, I'll ask your questions. Try to guess what will be the correct answer. This is useful to build the intuition around how the language works. We have this variable, city equals San Francisco. Uh, we have looked at the len function before. We used it for list, and len of a list will tell you how many items are there in the list. What about this? If I say len of city, what will thing will be the answer? So let's see what it says. 13. Why 13? Well, it's a 13 characters. A string is a list of characters. And 13 includes the space. So that's also a character. So in Python, a lot of the functions are context dependent. A length of a list is number of items. Length of a string is number of characters inside that. So if you want to know how long is a string, you can also say length. What about this? If I say city.split, what do you think will happen? When you call split, it'll split the text into uh, individual parts separated by space. And right now there are two parts, one is San and another is Francisco. So it gives us a list of the two parts. And if I want to extract the first part, I can say city.split of zero, and I can just get the first part. If I want the second part, I can say this, right? Sometimes useful for data processing. The split function by default takes a space, but what if I have a text like this? I have a text, San Francisco, California, and I want to split it into San Francisco and California. I can say city.split and give an optional argument. It says split at a comma. And now it'll split into two parts, San Francisco and California. So if I imagine I had a list of cities with state and I just want to extract the city, I'll just say, go through the items, split it by comma, and then get the zeroth item. Then you can get the output of that. Back to our original text, city. This is how split works. What about city dot upper? What do you think will happen? We'll turn this into an uppercase, right? So if you have dot lower, you turn into lowercase. Since we also saw that the city is just a string of list of characters, you can guess what will happen if I say city of zero. It will give the first character of the string. What about city of minus one? When you have in indexing, you can use negative numbers to count from backwards. So negative one is the last character. So if you have a list of things and you want to get the last thing, minus one can start counting from backwards. Super helpful. Where you have a long list of things, you don't want to know what is the length of the list and find that index. You can just start counting from backwards. You can also use this indexing notation to extract a substring. So the indexing notation has these three parts. You can just give say a list and you can give index. So you can say start, end, and step. So there are three parts to it. So you can, if you just give the one character, one part of it, it'll extract that index. You can give two parts of it. You can say, give me a list of things starting and ending. If you have this colon in the middle, it'll give you this. So if I say city, zero to three, it'll say start at zero, stop at three. The last index is not included. So if I say city zero to three, it'll give me sand. Zero, one, two, stop at third index. I can omit any of this. So I can say city four colon. What do you think this will print? This will print starting at four. Since we omitted the ending step, it'll just say Francisco all the way till the end. What about this city and colon? What do you think will happen? Start at beginning and at end, you'll get the full string. Colon, colon two, start at the beginning, end at the end, at the interval of two. This will give you every alternate character. And now let's see if you can guess this correctly. Colon, colon, minus one. What do you think this will happen? Reverse string. So it says, start at the end, stop at the beginning in reverse order. 
Right? If you see this, it's very cryptic, but once you understand that this is the indexing notation is three parts, start index, stop index, and the step, colon, colon, minus one, will reverse the string. One of the top interview questions, if you go for a Python interview, they'll ask, how do you reverse the string in Python? And that is colon, colon, minus one. Now you understand how it works. And again, this notation works for lists and you know data frames and all kind of objects. It's a set, set up in a similar way. One of the problems with strings is so far we've used quotes to do this. So we have defined strings like you know put San Francisco in single quotes and it works. What if your string itself has a quotation mark inside? So let's say I want to create a text. It's a beautiful day. And if I try to create this, I get an error, right? Because how does Python interpret this? There is a quote, there's a quote end, there's one more quote. So it's not a valid thing because I have a quote inside. One way to fix this is I can use double quotes. Python accepts both single quotes and double quotes for strings. So I can do this and it will create my string without any issues. So, one solution is if you want to have single quote in a string, use double quotes. But again, my advice is to always be consistent with quotations. If you use single quotes in your program, keep single quotes everywhere. If you use double quotes, use double quotes everywhere. So one solution to this is I want to use single quotes, but I would still want to create a string like this. You can use this character called backslash. Python has this character called backslash, which is an escape character. An escape character means that whatever is following the escape character, there is no special meaning to it. In Python, there are some characters having special meaning, right? Single quote is start and end of a string. So if you say I, it by expression single quote, this single quote loses its special meaning. It's just interpreted as a literal character. And now I can print this even with single quotes. So prefixing anything with the backslash removes its special meaning to this. So you will see this escape characters uh, in few places. One of the other problems you'll encounter is sometimes in geospatial work with Python, you'll have coordinates that are given to you like this. This is a representation of the coordinates in the degree, minute, seconds uh, format. So this is 37 degrees, 46 minutes, 26.292 seconds. And you have both single quotes and double quotes. Now, how do I store this? This becomes problematic. I need to do so much escaping of characters. If I have a long paragraph with a lot of single quotes and double quotes, it becomes a nightmare to process that. So Python provides yet another way to do this. And the solution that brilliant programmers of Python came up with was triple quotes. So put triple quotes in everything that is interpreted as nothing inside that string is has a special meaning. So you'll see triple quoted strings quite a few places in Python, especially when you're documenting something, you say, I want to write a long paragraph in my code, you put everything in triple quotes. So it's preserved, all the formatting is preserved, nothing inside it is special meaning. So now I can take any arbitrary string and you know put it in triple quotes and it'll be preserved. And in, uh, when you use Python to read a file containing degree minute seconds coordinates, internally they'll be represented with triple quoted strings. So that you don't have problems with, you know, some single quotes or double quotes with minutes and seconds. Another problem that you have with backslashes is Windows paths. When you're dealing with files, you have paths like this, right? So you have path saying C users, which well, and then this is a backslash. Now this creates a problem because backslash has now it's an escape character. So if I run this, I'll get an error, some error here. That backslash has a special meaning and that special meaning doesn't preserve. So how do we do this? Any guesses? How do we escape the escape character? Put one more backslash. And this says the next character loses its special meaning, right? So you can say double backslash and it says, okay, next backslash is not an escape character anymore. Sometimes when you are coding and you get an error and you have some paths, you'll see the internal Python will sometimes store those windows paths with double backslashes so that it can escape those. Python has one more thing called a raw string. 
when you have a lot of backslashes, you don't want to escape each of them. You can prefix the string with R. R indicates that what follows this string is a raw string. Do not consider any backslashes as special inside of that. So you will also see some code where people say, I'm defining some path. I don't want to worry about escaping every escape character. So I will just prefix it with raw uh, and it will be in a uh, raw character. The okay, last thing we learn in this notebook is when we want to print stuff, sometimes uh, we want to combine multiple strings together and print uh, some statement. So let's say uh, I want to print the statement. I have a variable called city. I have assigned the name of the city. I have some population. I've assigned this and I want to print this statement. Population of San Francisco is this. So we just say, I have these two variables and I want to print the statement that population of, then I can do something like this city is, and I can do things like this. Population of San Francisco is this. And again, this works, but it's quite unwieldy, right? I need to make sure I have the correct spaces. I convert numbers to strings and all of that. So when you're now joining multiple variables and will create strings uh, for error messages, for storing into files, you have to do something like this. So this is not very pleasant. So Python provides you with a much nicer way to combine different strings and create strings. And that is the format method. Let's learn this. With the format method, you want to create a string. You just create a string like this. You can say population of dash is dash. You put this placeholders with curly brackets. So I have a string. What this says is the value of this curly brackets will be replaced by something later on. So you create a text you saying population of dash is dash. Once the string is created, you can say format. And you can say what goes in the first blank, well, whatever is the value of the city, what goes in the second blank, whatever is the value of the population. And now you can print stuff very nice. So this is much nicer. You don't have to kind of join different things. It also does the conversion of the variables for you automatically. So whenever you feed yourself, they want to print stuff and you want to combine different variables, don't use plus plus and join these things. Use the string forward method, which is much nicer and will give you uh, much more control over how you print this. The format method also has you know, a lot of other options. Yeah, you can, if you want to learn about certain functions and how they work, you can right click in JupyterLab and there's this option, show contextual help. So I can select any function and it'll give you some help around that. So there's one more way to get help where you can just right click, show contextual help, and you can do this. I find sometimes it's helpful, but most of the time I find myself, okay, this is not very clear. I want some examples. So again, my preferred method would be the search and look at the, the documentation. I like the W3Schools documentation, which will explain things with code examples. So the format will take some values, but you can also apply some formatting while you are replacing the values in the string. So it has got this lot of these different formats. So you say, I want to convert this to a, a number with commas. I, have, uh, I want to add a thousand separator, or I want to convert this into a scientific notation. I have a number 1 million. I want to represent it at 1, e 10 or something like that, right? So you have this formatting option that are available to you uh, with different things. You can kind of convert this directly. Let's see an example of how that works. One of the common things that you'll have to do uh, when you're doing you know, work with spatial data is work with the coordinates and say, I have this very long precision of coordinates. I want to turn this into round this uh, coordinates into some uh, numbers. So I can say, I want to round this to two decimals. I have this latitude and longitude. I want to round them off to two decimals. So you can just say, I have to create a string. I want to print the coordinates, you know, blank comma blank let's just print it like this it just creates a string this comma this so i can also say the coordinate uh i can create a string like this but i want to print them with a two decimal position 
you can just do it directly right here. So once you read the format documentation, the format is you can do dot two f dot two f. This says there's a floating point number. Give it with two decimal position. Now when I run this, and now you can see it prints the value with two decimals. It didn't change the value with the latitude and longitude. It just converted them for printing. So quite helpful when you have this long decimals. You just want to print and say I want to print with only two decimal decision. You can use this kind of formatting here. And there are many other things. You can convert numbers to scientific position. You can uh, add thousand separators and so on. So read the documentation for the string format method to know all the conventions for doing that. This was the kind of the preferred go-to method for a long time in Python. This is what I'm used to. And you know this kind of comes naturally to me. In newer versions of Python, Python 3.6, which has been around for a while now, uh, they introduce one more method where they said, even this is little unwieldy. Can we make it better? So they introduced this concept called F strings. So let's learn a bit more about F strings. We learned about raw strings with R. Similarly, F strings can be prefixed with F. So you create your formatted string like this, and you create it like this. So you can say F population of dash is dash. In the format function, you have to fill those with dot format. Here you can fill it right there. So you can say population of city is this. It works right there. So this is much more readable where it says population of city is population. And this value of stuff within the curly brackets will be fetched from the variables and replaced at runtime. For this to work, you need to prefix your string with F, saying there is some formatted strings that are inside. So before you print this, replace the stuff in curly brackets with their actual values. So this is a more modern way of doing string formatting in Python. Does this stuff works as well? So the same thing, if you want to convert to a formatted string, you say F, and instead of calling dot format, you can just say, keep this, and we say, Latitude is here and longitude is here. Same thing. So coordinates are latitude formatted to two decimals, longitude formatted to two decimals. Same thing works. You can use whichever you prefer. I have switched to using F strings everywhere now, but I've got some feedback from many people who are beginners. They say format method is something that they find more comfortable. So whatever method you are comfortable with, use that. Both are fine like f strings make sure to prefix f between that if you don't do this just continue using the normal strings and call dot format and replace those curly brackets with their values let's do the exercise